Why do your plants pearl or release O2 bubbles right after you do a water change? This is a question that I had for a little while. I couldn't quite figure it out. I read a lot of forums online. Some would say it's because you're replacing lost minerals in the water. Some would say it's because you're dissolved CO2. Um, so when I would do a water change, within about 15 minutes or so, I would notice that my plants would start releasing O2 bubbles. Or bubbles. I wouldn't necessarily say I knew they were O2, but you think when you're thinking plants, they release oxygen. So um, around the edges of the leaves, cracks in the leaves, tips of grass blades, uh, all over the moss, um, really bubbles out of the stems. You'll, you'll see the bubbles form and they'll start coming out and continuously. And in some cases you see like a continuous little fine stream of bubbles coming out of things. And it usually lasts for about an hour or so and then it stops. So that was a question that was just very interesting when I would see that happen. I, I, I was like, oh, what's going on here? Um, so everyone's tap water is going to be different. You might have well water. Uh, it, this is just uh, from my experience, and if it matches your experience, then you can probably use this uh, info as, as well. Um, so CO2, let's talk about that, because it is not the minerals going into your water, especially when you have a very low TDS or your water is soft. Um, the minerals in the water, in the, in, the, in the tank, in the aquarium, are not getting used that quick. If you do a TDS test two months later, this is going to be exactly the same as your tap water. If you're not doing anything to the water or having anything, or, and you don't have anything in there, uh, that's going to change that. Nothing that's releasing carbonates or anything like that. Um, so if you got minerals in your water, uh, it's, that's not really what's causing it. If, it's definitely the CO2. And... Here's how I tested that in my case. So first I took water directly from the tap and I tested the pH of it. And the pH of the water from the tap was 7.2. If I let the water sit on the countertop for a little while and come back and test it, it would go up to 7.4. Um, now, you know, it, you would think it'd be stable just because, uh, you know, you're not adding any, anything to the water. But the thing is, is water inherently is by nature pure water is, is actually slightly acidic but theoretically the theoretical pH of pure water is supposed to be neutral so why does it why would it be slightly acidic uh, inherently well that's because CO2 gets absorbed into, into water and creates something called carbonic acid so it makes it slightly acidic um, so as soon as that water that's pure is exposed to air that's what's going to happen. Now, if it's not exposed to air and it's in a sealed container, the pH is basically, it should be about 7, should be neutral. Um, so what I did is I took distilled water that has nothing in it to buffer the pH in any kind of way, zero TDS. I took one cup of that water and put it upstairs and one cup of that water and I put it in the basement. Now, since CO2 is heavier than air, theoretically you would think that CO2 uh, is going to be in higher concentrations than the lower levels of your house. So, when I started the test, I did test the, the pH of the water, and the pH of water to start with was 6.4. I came back a week later after it was sitting out, and I tested the pH of the water that was upstairs, and that was 6.4, the same as it started out with. The pH of the water I tested from the cup in the basement was 6.2, roughly. Now, you might not think that those points are a big difference, but when you talk about pH, the pH scale, uh, it's logarithmic, so if you have a pH of 7, a neutral pH, and you go to a pH of 8, um, that's a, it's a more, it's basic, more basic water, it's not acidic, it's, so it's more alkaline, and that is 10 times more alkaline than it was at 7, I know it's neutral, but that is 10 times different. If you go to a pH of 9, that is 100 times more different, so those little points do matter. Uh, so that test kind of that test proved to me that I do have a lot of CO2 dissolved in my tap water, um, because in both cases where the pH changed by that much, just by 0.2, um, that tells me that there was CO2 and it was gassing off after it was sitting or being absorbed if it was in the basement. Um, the bubble, the the aerator behind me here, you know, I have that in the tank to keep the tank kind of at equilibrium with the environment now. The reason you're using an aerator isn't really to add air or oxygen to the water, it's to gas off the CO2 and to create surface agitation so that you're breaking up the, uh, um, 
the, the film that would normally form on the, on the top of your water. So that creates the gas exchange. So the water in your tank stays in equilibrium with the environment around it. Um, however, if I test the pH of this tank, it's going to be 7.4. If I turn that aerator off and test it a week later, it's still going to be 7.4. There's not enough in here to produce enough CO2, and the plants themselves produce O2, so it's just in constant equilibrium. Um, but if you have a lot of fish in your tank, less plants, you will find that your pH will change because if you don't have an aerator, uh, you'll notice that the pH will actually go down because there's, there's more CO2 in your water and um, it's having less gas exchange at the surface. So that's how you can test it in your case. Um, but I thought I would share the information for everyone out there who was, who was wondering about the, uh, the reason why your plants release O2 bubbles right after you do a water change. And I hope that information is helpful for a lot of you.